Hi everyone, I'm Montserrat Pascual, an applicant for SEMS MIM. Today I'm here to answer the question, how will climate change affect globalization and international business during the next 10 years? First of all, I would like to give context to the concept that this question brings up, such as climate change, globalization and international business. In recent years, we have begun to feel the effects of climate change, a concept that refers to long-term changes in temperatures and weather patterns, effects that are also reflected in increasing communication and interdependence of the world's economies, cultures and populations, as well as in trade activities between all types of organizations that cross borders. It is difficult to ignore the growing number of catastrophic climate-related events that are affecting people and regions all over the world from wildfires to increased hurricane activities to droughts to extreme winter storms. Glaciers have shrunk, sea levels and temperatures are rising rapidly. Hurricanes are becoming stronger and heat waves are becoming more intense. As a result, we are now beginning to incur some of the adaptation costs that until recently we believe will be years away. Likewise, companies are under increasing pressure to combat climate change from stakeholders, including workers, customers and investors. Moreover, the interest of shareholders in investing in companies that comply with ESG standards is growing. Therefore, corporations are being compelled to acknowledge the financial, operational and physical effects of climate change on their organization's human and financial resources. The main ways that global warming will affect economic growth are through challenges to security, loss of productivity, damage to infrastructure and property and mass migration. Recent extreme weather disasters have affected corporate operations and caused the loss of life, material possession and much more. Like I said, climate change can have implications on employees' mental and physical well-being. And in most companies, especially the global services industry, human capital is the most critical asset. According to the American Psychological Association, episodes of depression, anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder are becoming more frequently linked to meteorological disasters brought on by climate change, such as floating and protected droughts. Do we not forget that growing an economy requires human capital? The knowledge and abilities that an individual possess can help an organization reach its goals. On the other hand, environmental influences are likely to lead to lower supply. In addition, resources scarcity may cause countries to be more protective of their natural resources, making it more difficult for businesses to obtain the raw materials they need to produce goods. Overall, climate change threatens every industry, but some are more vulnerable than others. For example, insurance has a greater impact on global consumers than on businesses. As the risk of extreme weather events increases, insurance costs could rise for many companies and negatively impact their profits. Another example is ski companies, which are threatened by rising global temperatures. Companies will need to think about how climate change may affect their decision-making for future location strategies, which typically incorporate talent, cost arbitrage, and traditional operational and business environmental factors. It is also important to consider that different regions and geographies are affected differently by climate change. Having said that, companies need to change the way they operate for the long term and start thinking about changing their strategies and business model for the future because if they make small changes every time, it will cost more in the future if they don't do it right away. While short-term solutions are beneficial, they are insufficient given that some effects of climate change influence aspects of business that operate over a lengthy period of time. We must continue with ideas and solutions that think about the long term, such as the Paris Agreement where world leaders sign this legally binding international treaty and commit to reduce their emissions and collaborate together in order to adapt the impacts of climate change. In short, this agreement provides a lasting framework with a view to guiding the global effort for decades to come. To conclude, businesses should not act alone but work together to develop solutions to climate risk by leveraging the expertise of other stakeholders and taking into account their needs. Moreover, investors should take advantage of their privileged position and continue to challenge and influence the companies in which they invest by taking an active ownership role and encouraging improvement in corporate governance, such is the case of Hermes EOS, which provides shareholder engagement services, and in 2014 began a dialogue with Sinotec management to implement a methane reduction program, among other initiatives. Everyone has a role to play and the business community should take measurable decisive action on climate change to avoid worst case scenarios.